Hello, Whistler. Uh, yes? My name is Dr. Clara Richardson. I'm the outside child and teen therapist that your school referred to. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, thank you. So as it was mentioned by your caseworker, you have these night visions that bring you a form of PTSD. Yeah, doctor, it's hard to explain. But almost every time, I just 
There's this barren wasteland in my head that I can't seem to stop having these visions about. Snow, chains, and last night. There was this girl. This girl was in the vision. I don't think I had ever known her before, but she was there lying on the ground. She spoke to me and said, please save yourself. I can't remember how it ended, but I saw her flying off the ground and that's when I woke up screaming. I can't, I can't describe it, doctor. Well, I lie, dear. When we have these recurring visions of internal fear, usually these instances can be traced back to a traumatic experience. Can you tell me if you ever had trauma growing up as a child? I don't recall having anything traumatic. I often lived a semi-normal life with just my mom. We don't really mention anything about my dad because I never knew him growing up. And if I presume that contributes to any trauma growing up without a dad, then I can't see if that is what brought these dark visions, even when it happened all so suddenly. I see. That's often the complicated part about the human mind of not knowing what causes these episodes without any history of trauma. You did mention that you have seen this girl though. And maybe this girl might be one of those moments of your imagination where you imagined her trying to save you from danger, where your subconscious creates an archetype in a way that protects you from danger. Most of the time it's usually a symbol of things that could happen that are serious. What do you suppose I could do, doctor? That's the thing, I can't predict if these visions will happen again. However, I can suggest that you could do something that can distract it. Like hanging out with your friends or watching a movie. Those are things I would do to relieve my mind of positive things to distract my mind from having these visions. I'll try, doctor, thank you. You weren't at school where we always meet. What happened? I had a meeting with an out-of-school therapist as prescribed by my caseworker. Nothing too big. Therapy? I didn't think you were the type of girl to need extra help coping with psychology. Oh no, it's just that I had that vision again, you know? The one about the wasteland and the chains? The recurring dream, huh? So what did the doctor ask of you? Said I had to preoccupy my mind by doing stuff that would make me not think about those thoughts. You know, like we are doing right now by hanging. Well, recurring dreams usually happen apart from weeks or even months from each other. Not the next night. So, I think you wouldn't have to worry. Yeah. Hopefully tonight when I go to bed I won't have the same vision as the night before. I guess that's fair. I guess somebody's moving in across the street. Interesting. Come on, Callie. Come and help the moving people. Sure, Dad. Anything for you. Don't start giving me sass, young lady. I don't have patience for it. Huh. Such a great impression of the father. Maybe we should go help the girl settle in. Give her a proper welcome to the neighborhood. Are you coming? That girl looks familiar. She looks like I have seen her somewhere before. Yet I have never met her before. Could it be? Wait. No. It couldn't be the girl from the dream. But she, she, looks identical. Maybe it could be just some ordinary girl. Or maybe Dr. Richardson was right. And she could have been someone I just dreamt of out of my imagination. But she is real. I am looking right at her. This can't possibly be a coincidence. I guess I better go help them. Hey. Need a hand there? Oh. Uh, sure, who are you two? My name is Riley Levante. This is my friend Isla Whistler. Callie. Callie Bannerman. It's a pleasure to meet you both. But you two shouldn't be here. My father doesn't like me hanging around other people. We already got the impression of him. Sure he wouldn't mind us helping you move these heavy boxes and furniture. I appreciate it, but he could be quite irrational. I don't want to drag you both down with me. Nonsense. You got us. Right, Isla? Um, sure. Yeah, you got us.
So Callie, what brings you to Glenstone? Oh, um, well, it's quite a long story. Me and my dad moved out here from the city of Arkenvast as a result of a legal custody battle between my dad and mom. Unfortunately, the courts ruled in favor of my father as they deemed my mom unfit as a parental guardian whilst my father is no good of a person than that of my mom is. So my dad packed up and dragged me with him to Glenstone as it's only closer to his job and well out and away from the city from my mom. I am not even allowed to see or call her as part of the court order and my father. Well, isn't it all nice? So I'm just left here picking up the pieces of my parents' shattered relationship while I get scolded at almost every single day. That's... that's really tragic. I'm sorry. Yeah, well... you don't have to be sorry. It's just my life and slowly I just learnt to accept it. But anyway, hopefully moving here could be the start of something new. Though I wish I wasn't where I am at right now. Callie, what gives? You invite random strangers into my home without my permission. Dad, wait. It's not like that. They were just helping me move our stuff into the living room. Well, if you wanted help, ask next time. Don't be like your mother and invite random strangers over to our house. I think it's best if you girls would leave. Thank you.